What's going on, everybody? It's your friend Will. This is the memory lapse. We're back. More sealed, uh, sealed deck, Kilt of Ravnica. And if you didn't catch the end of the last video where we put this together, we have our three color Slesnia slash Golgari jammed together deck. Um, initially, we weren't looking at white, but two luminous bonds and a conclave tribunal. It's pretty hard to ignore that removal. <coughs> And some decent, I mean, we're actually, we're only just playing like these two other cards. But we have the locket. Oh, this is pretty good too for picking up a big boy and going over the top. So, not sure how this is going to play out. But it looks like we have a decent curve up and down, a lot of answers, and uh, some big stuff to try to close the game out. So, let's give it a whirl, see if we can improve from our previous effort. So the gateway plaza means we're going to be starting a little bit slower, but <coughs> I think this is still keepable. We'll lead with swamp in case we do draw forest and get the natural. That called shot. Jeez. Okay. I was hoping to hit a land or something there. Oh, interesting. Alright, so we'll get our champion out. Looks like we'll play the gateway next turn. In the, uh, Centaur after. They're going to give us a turn. This card. If I was Jennifer Lawrence, I'd be suing right now over this card. I know these artists do take inspiration <laughs> from real life models. This one just looks really close. The face. I doubt that's where the artist, uh, you know, I doubt he used her likeness, but at that scale with minimized details, it definitely looks like her. Okay, so we're going to get in for free here. This is, even if they have like a pacifism type effect, like one of the blue ones, <coughs> we're still in a pretty good spot with this to just generate tokens and run away with the game. I'm a little nervous that they could have a. Uh, the flash creature here, the three two flash. Which makes me want to wait on attacking. Oh yeah, there's no reason to convoke. But if I play this for his main phase and they have a counter spell of some kind, then at least I know I get to jam. <coughs> yeah. I'm not gonna attack into the four open mana here. the 3-2 flash.
we're just going to attack with the uh, Vigilance guy. I'd love to grind this game out with uh, token activations. I mean, I think long term, this is the more concerning card for them. I think I'm just going to make a token rather than play this, because this doesn't really do that. It's not that different from making a token on the current board right now. Instant, right? Yeah, so we can save that. <coughs> Excuse me. I think we're content to keep making tokens here. These life links, so we're going to be winning the race fairly shortly. this card. It's pretty hard to beat. One, two, three. One, two, three. So if we draw a land, we can remove a spawn to plus make a token. Yeah, we do. tapped out, so we'll get the attack in here. So we get to keep up either statue or make a token. Price of fame. This doesn't regenerate it, right? Alright, so we'll make a token. something. One of our uh, undergrowth cards would be really good. There are six creatures in the graveyard. Loom response is not bad either. In fact, I think I even want to like proactively bonds here.
they spend their turn jump starting here, we're in a really good spot. But I can't imagine that they're just gonna have no play. Eight lands available. Each. So interestingly, for each of the guild mechanics, wow, a second hatchery spider. Okay. Nice sealed deck. Uh, Alright, so I'm going to statue this. And for five. hope that we just get there next turn. This undergrowth, I mean, you know, it's been really tough the, to evaluate this mechanic, or I should say it's like not nearly as strong as it seemed it was going to be. Because I know a lot of the uh, talk around this was, well, you know, the games go long enough, you just get there naturally, but the games that I've played, like look at this like this game has gone on at least nine turns, maybe more. And this person has played <laughs> Hatchery Spider for Zero twice. It's uh it's really not a given that you're gonna set it up. So if I draw a creature, this is quite the scary card. They're gonna be forced to block with the lurcher of triple damage. I wonder what else they could be thinking about here for two. Ripped a land. We have a lot of life, a lot of life to work with, but now we're we're rapidly losing edge because they're gonna have a chemist's insight that they can flash back. They must have another land in hand even because I, don't, I would not have played that with a chemist's insight behind. As of this turn, though, depending on what their play is, they, they can't necessarily attack us yet. They would need to have another good play. And even then, given the colors we're in, they can't feel too confident about just swinging and hoping that we don't have a removal spell that we could top deck. If we had one, we obviously would have played it last turn to try to seal the game. When they were mostly tapped out anyways. Looks like they surveilled and kept both on top, which is bad news for us. Alright, Rock Charger actually gets us there. Let's be like reasonably smart with how we pay for it. They only have one blue up. So I don't know that there's a counterspell that they can have here. The uh, surveil counterspell costs double blue. I don't know. There might be a single blue one that counters like a creature that costs four or more, which this doesn't. But this is definitely a must-answer card for them. It hits the board. Enters the battlefield. So I'm guessing they're going to go into turn. Jumpstart the insight. I 
Yeah, so the cards like this have been really hard to use. I, like I had a deck, the very first sealed deck I made, that had like this card and the one that has is a zero zero. It gets a plus one plus one plus counter for undergrowth and it has haste and it's just like the number of times I just had these cards that were over costed and underpowered because I had no way to fill my graveyard. It, it doesn't really happen naturally. In constructed, when you can play like for shaman and for um, of that one drop as well to fill your graveyard, I think it becomes a little more a little more predictable. But even then, I've had I've been playing a deck that's like dedicated green black, just fill your graveyard and go off, and you still get situations where you have like turn six a zoni for one. So this is, I don't know, I'm not really sure how to classify this mechanic. And maybe it's really well balanced and, oh, Bounty of Might. So how did that end up in the graveyard? Oh, they discarded it to jumpstart. That's, how is that possible? <laughs> how good is their hand right now that they discarded this to jumpstart? I guess this does not help them block the flyer, the flying damage coming through. But again, like they could have just held that swamp back and not played it last turn and discarded that to jumpstart. So I'm pretty sure they just played nothing. Alright, Lazav. Five, six, seven. They actually have exactly enough mana for it to copy the spider and get um, reach. This this is Magneto's in this card again. Magneto is all over this set. <sighs> yeah, so they can pay seven to give this thing reach. If we draw a creature. Then this just gets plus two, plus two, and uh, we hit him for two. I wonder if they see it though. I wonder if they were just whatever it was they they surveilled. They kept it on top. Oh, they don't see it. This is really sad. We've had so many turns just to draw anything and we've bricked out. Oh, I'm trying to think of what's left in our deck at this point. That's going to get us out of this, but this is the first game with it and I didn't take a screenshot or anything. Yeah, I don't think there's like a view deck button. <laughs> Which I guess you wouldn't have in real life anyways. Hmm. So these are big. I'm guessing that they're going to find an attack here. Possibly just this, yeah. Where's that famous green black flyer that Mark Ro Rosewater is so famous for? Could really use that right now. Mm, another land. I'm a little, I'm um, slightly punished for playing the second Lumen Spawns here and pushing them down to three, but I think with the expectation that we would have not drawn like four or five lands in a row after that. We 
pretty easily win this game like with one more spell. We still haven't necessarily lost, but I think we're losing it at this point. Although they are down to 10 cards. I think we're going to have a hard time stalemating against these two tramplers, considering... what we milled. Alright, so if we take 10 here, which I guess we have to do... So we rip straight land. Okay. Well, that was close. Let's look at our deck and just see if there was anything that we could have drawn. I knew we had the 6-4 that would have helped us push damage and at least force a uh, block. But it did not pop up. We had our own Siege Worm. We had the 6-4. Oh, we had Doom Whisperer. Duh. Okay, so that would have been sick at any point. Um, Undersea Uprising would have been really good with all those 1-1s. We had our own Rhizome Lurcher, that would have been huge. Conclave Tribunal to kill something. This was Nealoc to draw. Uh, Prey Upon, which wouldn't have done anything immediately. So we actually had quite a few top decks in there. We just didn't find them. 17 land. I think this deck needs 17 with this type of curve. Yeah, Undersea Uprising would have been very good. Uh, okay, so on to the next one. I think this deck is somewhat powerful. That creature that makes tokens is nuts. That game took a while, our opponent was roping a lot and playing slowly. this a lot. So hopefully Glow Spore Shaman helps us find a white source. With this hand we're almost certainly just putting land on top to get to six or a black source too. Doom Whisperer. Yeah, so black source please. We're on time. Doom Whisperer. Alright we'll take the white source. that they decide to make this like a 3-1. Wow, they're ramping up. We get to wood shape here. And dig for a creature. We're drawing lands just not the right color. And I guess we'll just take Siege Worm and slam this next turn. So these should have gone to the bottom randomly. Yeah. It's interesting that they chose to put in random order instead of any order. And I wonder if they're going to move towards that wording now with this digital product out. Badly need another 
source of black. We can pick this off at any time with the Undercity Uprising, which is nice. Especially if they do something to make it a lot bigger. I would also just happily block here. This is interesting. If you pay to make it a 4-4, four four, they, they could have plus 2, plus 2. They have double plus 2, plus 2. I think I want them to use their tricks here. I think we're fine with this. Because here we'll deadweight this guy. I guess we're not blocking, right? This is so annoying. Hmm. Playing the trooper really doesn't do anything because this is first strike, so I think I just need to use this now. And pick off their siege worm. This is the Perils of Sealed. You know, we are drawing all our black cards and we're gated on one swamp. So we're limited to playing one thing per turn. <sighs> yeah, so now we really need to draw that black source. Will this even help us? Jeez. Not necessarily. No, so decline. Flooded so hard, four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, in, in retrospect, I guess, no, I think putting that planes on top, turn two, was really good. Because we didn't have white at all. And now we're just mega punished. Flooding. just go to um, 6, unfortunately. Or, sorry, I can't just go to 4, because then the equal knots by itself is lethal. Yeah, that's why I love these cards. These are just so insane. The Cygnus, I think, still are just, in terms of ramp and fixing, like the original Cygnus are so powerful. But this is just, like for limited play. This card is insane. Three, four with Mentor. We can put him 
down. And bonds the equinox. Block here, take three. Imagine if we had do turn five Doom Whisperer. I was so excited to see this in the opening hand. spell pretty much gets them there. Oh, that hurts. So that means even if we draw black uh, here, it's not enough because we have too much damage to try to prevent. That's too bad. Another really strong... It looked like a really strong opening hand. I just didn't come together. At least I didn't like accidentally not pick a swamp. Like I never had an option to get the second black source that I declined. It just wasn't there in 20-something uh, cards that we saw. This looks solid. This will be the one where we get stuck on two instead of flooding out. <laughs> I just deadweight this now. It's so annoying. Yeah. Alright. It's all coming together. actually going to block here. That's great for us. I guess I'll play the trooper. This actually has a chance to get big later on now. We got Jund. So this is interesting that they're in Jund, because there's no red, green, or red, black guild in the uh, set right now. And if they block, we'll discard and take the free damage.
so can't complain though. I think we want the wood shaper, right? It's the old five mana. Destroy a creature. They held back. I still have my prey. I do. Okay. I think I'm gonna actually hold this. I don't think I get a lot of value playing it. And if we draw our prey upon, it becomes a lot better. And it also has value to discard to the trooper to potentially protect it from any kind of like red damage based good deal too Setting up a six line is pretty good there. For now, we can draw um, the top end of our deck and play it. I think the question here. I'm just gonna play this uprising here. So now they don't get any value out of this. left the attack there. I really do want to hold this though for the prey upon because I'm worried that they've got a handful of big stuff like they're stuck on five. That's pretty concerning. I can't get around five damage. Maybe this is how you end up in green, red, black. <coughs> Just a lot of removal across the colors. Uh, and now we're going to flood out. This is Neb Trample by itself. This deck looked really good, and we're just going to 0-3 with it. <coughs> so just can't draw the right parts of our deck. We're missing a really good way to recur stuff. Um, 
See, so yeah, other thing that's a little clunky about these graveyard mechanics and limited. Is even what's clunky about them in construct is that there's not a lot of ways to like when you burn resources to keep yourself in the game. I guess we really need to draw one of those token makers now. Uh, one, two, three, four, cost five. Oh my god. Alright, we lost. We flooded out again. Wow, it wasn't dead. That counter actually helped them. It made the difference. Because if this was only five, this would have put me to six, and this would put me to one. Instead, they had enough. That's crazy. Wow. Alright, rough beat. Sealed deck sucks. Not a fun format. Um, let's open our pity packs. Let's open our pity packs and call an end to this. Alright. This one's definitely kind of unplayable, I have to imagine. I can see this being a sideboard card, bounty agent. Oh. Tristani. This is a decent card. I've seen people floating less with this card. Because it does make a lot of uh, power when it comes into play. Alright, well that's it for sealed. I don't know if I'm going to do another one because I have not been having a particular amount of fun. I mean, I had okay fun the one that I won. I got seven wins in, but I wouldn't even say I had like a lot of fun. It was just nice to win. But uh, it sucks to not play your spells or just have your one good card killed and then have nothing else. So, but that's always kind of been my f opinion of the format. Um, anyways, uh, that's probably for sealed. But yeah, we'll have more constructed stuff and uh, start playing the real game with new cards later.